Today is one of those all too rare, properly good news days. So thank whichever fairy you worship up in the sky. Because the morbidly obese Polestar 4 EV is now on sale. <laughs> Almost. And the one I want could be yours too for just over $140,000. This vehicle has it all, dude. It's a Chinese EV pretending to be Swedish. It's a massive waste of the Earth's resources, pretending to be somehow environmentally virtuous. It comes pre-wrapped in 20 tonnes of CO2, which was used to manufacture it. That's according to them. It has an environmentally preposterous 100 kilowatt hour battery, which is the primary explanation for its morbid obesity. And to put this in perspective, if you whip out and buy one of those cute 99 buck Ryobi drill driver kits from Bunnings this weekend, it's going to come with a 27 watt hour battery. So the Polestar 4 is roughly only 3,700 of those batteries. The battery in a Polestar 4 would not fit in a modern dual cab ute. And if it did, and you put it in there with you and Norell and the three sprogs and the usual sundry crap that you might carry in your fine conveyance, your planet destroying ute would be properly overloaded, dude. Speaking of morbidly obese stereotypes, Australia's most popular new vehicle last December was the mighty Ford Ranger. There's no place for these big heavy tanks in our cities, said every lefty EV evangelising insufferably virtuous twat ever. Inconveniently, however, in the domain of actual facts, the fake Swedish Polestar 4 dual motor version is heavier, only just, but still heavier than a bi-turbo 2.0-litre Ford Ranger Wild Track diesel. The Polestar 4 is also wider and within about half a metre of being the same frickin' length. This vehicle comes with a frunk full of pre-written jokes, which the Polestar 4 apparently wrote about its own existence, because this is the paradoxical life that it leads. I'm John Logan from autoexpert.com.au, new cars cheap, Australia only, website, card. Have to say, personal opinion, the misleading deception kicked off pretty early with this latest Polestar press release. Like, dude, it really did. Polestar 4 now on sale in Australia. Technically, this is true, perhaps. But in reality, all you can do right now is commit one of, arguably, the greatest mistakes of your life by slapping down a 1000 buck deposit. For me... In perspective, doing this would be a greater mistake than marrying ex-wives number three and number five, the sisters. <laughs> but on balance, number four was a far worse idea. Well, that's a bit strong. Only just worse. She was the frickin' Kim Jong-un of wives, I have to say. Even had the same hair, dude. According to them, i.e. Polestar, the Polestar 4 production will not actually start until mid-year and deliveries are not expected until August. That's a hell of a lot of edging, isn't it? I don't know about you, but when a headline screams, now on sale in Australia or something, I imagine being able to hit buy now and audaciously perhaps even take delivery in coming days. I'm kind of old-timey like that. It's a pretty consistent approach, however, by them. When your whole identity is built on half-truths, this is just what remaining on message actually looks like. I couldn't get away with this, and neither could you. Like, if you rented a P.O. box in Gothenburg and suddenly identified as Helga, 
but you actually set up shop in a Shanghai opium den or something, I'm almost certain that duplicitous conduct of this nature would negatively affect your credibility somehow. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Cyber threats are very real and we're all exposed to them every day. But you do not have to be the next victim. You just need countermeasures. And that's what NordVPN does in the background. I don't need to understand it, neither do you. We just want the protection. Like weapons grade data encryption, IP address hidden, everything locked down securely. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Grab the two year plan at a massive discount, plus you'll get four extra months free. NordVPN.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. You just subscribe, then you download the app and you connect. One click, your IP address is shielded, your online traffic is masked with NSA level encryption across as many as six of your devices. Nord is of course the fastest VPN on the planet. It costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Your location will be masked and this means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be geo-blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score great deals on travel and accommodation that are not available to you normally at home. That kind of thing happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring the channel and for helping to make more content like this. Possible. Polestar is rapidly becoming one of my all-time favourite automotive brands. They're just so astonishingly creative. Polestar 4 transforms the aerodynamics of a coupe and the space of an SUV into a new breed of SUV coupe. A new breed of SUV coupe. Mm. Didn't BMW do that whole swoopy roof thing with the X6? 17 years ago. I think they probably did. Pro tip, okay? The singular defining characteristic of a coupe is it has just two doors. Two. This shitbox has four. Just saying. They go on to explain, I'm paraphrasing, that it's wider than a dual cab ute, and although they cleverly omitted making any admissions as to the vehicle's battery-driven morbid obesity, in the press release, Redbook helpfully provides the data that the dual motor version is ever so slightly more lardy assed than a Ranger Wild Track by Turbo. The extent to which EVs get a pass on being so heavy is just it's shameful. The weight of EVs has exactly the same negative impacts on roadside barriers in collisions, on things such as versus conventional cars in collisions, especially the lighter ones, and in terms of tyre and road wear particles emitted as they drive, as well as the functional wear and tear on the roads. It's just the same as it does with utes and 4x4s. But seemingly, EVs get a free pass on this. It doesn't seem fair. In fact, I got dragged onto this post in LinkedIn, right? Because apparently someone couldn't tell the difference between me and Paul Marek, a car expert. Pro tip, I promise not to homoerotically wave at you. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just not going to do it here, dude. Not here, not now, not ever. I just can't bring myself to do it. I don't think I could do it authentically. 
Paul writes the following story, which I actually enjoyed. I had read it. The story is titled something like, uh, I drove an F-150 for a month and had a trousered teepee for so damn long that it got classified as a proper medical emergency. I think that was the title anyway. You could check. And of course, those inclined to a pro-EV fundamentalist stance found this whole story completely unacceptable, right? How dare he? He was accused of being funded by, quote, legacy auto and big oil. (sighs) People who do this, they just display zero understanding of how the media actually works. (laughs) Like if it was that simple to make money, dude, come on, everyone would be doing it. Plus, they apparently all overlook the inconvenient fact that the flagship F-150, which is the long wheelbase Lariat variant, at 2461 kilos, that's curb weight, weighs less than the morbidly obese Kia EV9 flagship at 2636 kilos tear mass. Okay? One chap actually said, we're probably a majority for one, and I really don't think we should be expanding our parking spaces and roads in order to accommodate these giants. They're just not needed or safe. Okay, just not needed or safe. Cars like the Polestar 4 and EV9 are in fact just as monstrous in the sense of their masses, right? And Of course, physics doesn't give a shit what components of the vehicle give rise to the overall mass. The F-150 is just 5 centimetres wider than an EV9, it's 21 centimetres taller and almost 1.2 metres longer, being a truck designed, you know, actually to carry stuff. But in terms of impacts on the road, on roadside hardware, and of course other vehicles, the EV9 is worse by virtue of its mass, and the Polestar 4 is only about 100 kilos lighter than the F-150. The only balanced view here is that they're all kind of similar in the monstrously obese domain at least if private personal transport is what they're being used for. And I don't think I can say this unequivocally enough, okay? We cannot save the planet one two-and-a-half-ton resource-intensive shitbox at a time. We just can't. Combustion or battery, it's just not possible. Selling a vehicle such as this or the F-150 or a Ranger is neither environmentally responsible, nor is it an example of effective climate action. It's the exact opposite of freaking course. Ford, at least, is not misrepresenting the Rangers or the F-150's ability to help us achieve either of those objectives. The battery in the abomination known as the Polestar 4 is line ball in the environmental insult sweepstakes with that of the preposterous battery in the Kia EV9. It features nickel manganese cobalt chemistry. That's right. The one with the lowest resistance to catastrophic thermal runaway and which also raises the worst ethical exploitation questions, especially in respect of the cobalt, and which emits the most toxic hazmat fallout when it goes poopy in an underground car park, right there with you and the kids parked next door or something. It's not a question of if anymore. It really is, isn't it? It's a question of when and where. But don't worry, Chris Bowen is on it and Albo fully grasping the granular detail of the technicalities and doing the only thing possible and prudent in the circumstances, busily looking the other way and concentrating on woke minority appeasement, which is, of course, so important. And the future in many ways can be here right now, to be very clear, Um, is solar panels on the roof charging your vehicle for free overnight. That's what it looks like. Repeat after me, dude. EVs, safe and effective. 
Just make sure you always know where those car park exits are and brief the kids on exactly what needs to be done in an emergency if an evacuation is necessary. This is what Electric Utopia actually looks like. We're all going to be there, living in harmony with the most neurotoxic heavy metals and the most highly acidic off-gassing, plus the risk of barrow trauma from the deflagration of explosive gases in confined spaces. And fires, which of course, in practice, cannot be fought. Who doesn't want all that? If you've got a PhD in organic chemistry and you believe I'm wrong, please let me know exactly where in the comments and I will issue a correction if necessary. But if you're just an insufferable electric twat who doesn't like the facts, maybe sit this one out, dude. Polestar explains right there that just getting one of these preposterous shit heaps to the end of the production line involves the emission of about 20 tonnes of CO2. Another joke that just writes itself when you consider the attribution of zero emissions which the zealots append to basically all EVs. Getting it down to 20 tonnes was a big job that involved hydropower and photovoltaics at the factory, which themselves are hardly CO2-free infrastructure undertakings, are they? Making the battery is about eight tonnes of CO2 right there. That's according to them. So let's put this in perspective. If you charge your Polestar 4 exclusively from so-called green electricity, which is nigh on impossible in Australia. But if you did and you sold a Ranger Wild Track 2.0 to buy your morbidly obese fake Swedish Virtue Mobile, you would break even on CO2 in roughly 106,000 kilometres, which is about seven years of average driving. If you'd like to confirm this, it's 20,000 kilos of CO2 embodied in the construction of your lardy arsed electric virtue masturbation chariot divided by 189 grams per kilometre for the Ranger, which you are no longer driving, obviously, divided by about 15,000 kilometres per year. And you have to make sure you convert 189 grams to kilos by dividing by 1,000. This is, of course, way too hard for the average bogan. But you might be able to keep up. Who knows? If you struggle, pro tip, try not to think about boobies. <laughs> It's almost impossible in practice, is it not? Imagine how much life you might get back if you could eliminate all of the times you just randomly thought of boobies and buy it back at some agreed value towards the very end. Not unlike a carbon credit trading scheme, now that I think about it. Perhaps you could pay some nice chap with some independent certification or something at the Mardi Gras not to think about boobies on your behalf, ever and thereby you would live to be, I don't know, a hundred. But would it be worth it? Probably not. Where were we? <laughs> Thinking about boobies. It's objectively greener to keep the Ranger for the next seven years, obviously, instead of buying a Polestar 4 when you measure it against CO2 emission criteria. And that's only if you recharge exclusively with green electricity, right? If you start sucking on the coal-fired stuff, the battery's going to be fucked before you break even, so you're never going to break even, in other words. New interior materials include a tailored knit textile which consists of 100% recycled PET along with bio-attributed microtech vinyl. <sighs> vinyl. Yes, so premium. 
Upliftingly, it seems, you can sit your ass on recycled drink bottles in a Polestar 4. <laughs> Nothing gives a vegan a bigger teepee in her trousers than the thought of unwaxed buttocks lightly caressing repurposed plastic. So that's all rather uplifting. See, I find the cranky ones sort of endlessly entertaining in these minorities, right? But in principle, I'm unopposed to happy vegans, happy electric car owners, happy feminists, whatever. Wouldn't it be lovely if the whole world just got happier? However, it seems to me that being kind of cranky makes many of those in those minorities somehow happy. And that's a real paradox, kind of like with God and the problem of evil. Okay? There is some leather available, however, if you want that. I think to put this in perspective, it's best if we let the fake Swedes explain how that works. Traced leather from Bridge of Weir, where the raw hides are byproducts of the food industry and come from Scottish farms that are independently rated by the Animal Protection Index as being of the highest global standard. Well, I'm sure that's such a great comfort to the beasts out there ruminating in the field at Bridge of Weir after that fateful sit-down chat out in the pasture. It happens with such regularity. They serve those little paspalum sandwiches, you know, the ones, the little triangle ones with the crusts cut off, and they're all garnished so beautifully with clover. But it's a sombre get-together. Look, ladies, we all know why we're here, and I remind you respectfully that this is in each of your contracts. Unfortunately, it's that time once again. Hamburger o'clock. The party, of course, will remain ongoing. It's just you won't be at it henceforth. But don't despair. Following your imminent hamburgerfication, we're going to reserve your skin and soak it in chromium-3 sulfate for quite some time before turning it into seat coverings for rich assholes who are philosophically unopposed to that kind of daily contact. All those in favour? Quick show of hooves? Ah, oh, yes, I think the eyes have it. Well done. That's the spirit. Jesus Christ. Don't waste my fucking time with this rhetoric about leather. We might as well all sit down and jointly admit what the fuck leather is. It's a consequence of those animals being killed. It always has been and it always will be. There's no need for us to work away, to chip away, fracturing the frickin' epistemology of reality on this one, even in the golden age of bullshit. And finally, just for completeness and what I would generally refer to as defecation and giggles. I just now endured the whole Polestar Shitsville trouser pull down online experience. They probably call it a, I don't know, vehicle configurator. I just sat there and ticked every box dual motor, magnesium colored exterior, the perfect color for a thermal runaway. Happy cow, Napa leather, fuck you vegans, I said in jest. What did I do then? Before we get to that, on their website, they actually call it Animal Welfare Napa Leather. Animal Welfare Napa Leather, Jesus. And it costs only 7,000 bucks, dude. So for me, it was an easy box to tick. Then I went for the Pilot Pack, the Plus Pack, and the Performance Pack. Together, it's only 15,000 bucks extra, dude. No word on the CO2 involved with all of that, though. Probably only, I don't know, a couple of tons more. The home charging cable, 550 bucks. Like the cheap pricks don't even throw one in, apparently. You have to buy it, 500 bucks. Bit of profit margin in that one, I'd suggest. Next thing you know, you'll have to buy, I don't know, the recycled fishing net floor mats. That's a thing. 
electrochromic roof. I wanted that too, uh, because it helps bounce the sunlight back into space where it fucking well belongs. 2700 bucks and probably only a little bit more CO2. You know you want one of those. Body garnish, had to have that because, you know, ex-wife number five, she had that. 1400 bucks for the Polestar. Like, total bargain, dude. I paid for number five's garnish and it was a hell of a lot more than that. Privacy glass, yeah, tow bar, okay. I also ticked the boxes for racks and flaps in homage to ex-wife number three. The first of the sisters, like, dude, such a weakness. And I added all of the interior shit as well because, hey, I could. And it was easy, including the 80-buck waste bin in case, you know, I'm ever running late one day and I just don't have time to stop and take a dump. Online sales commence with a starting indicative price of 81,500 Australian dollars. Bugger that, I said in my rack flap and body garnish fueled box ticking frenzy. My grand total. Well, let's just say I still get change out of 143,000 big ones, but only just. Which seems like a Really amazing deal to me. Totally amazing. And I'll be greener than a ranger in just over six years. Provided the Polestar 4's morbidly obese battery doesn't need the 80 buck waste bin before I do. I must preface this closing statement by telling you that I am not a doctor, dude, and therefore this is not actual medical advice. However... If you feel drawn to this astonishing vehicle, despite all that I have said, I would argue that a process server will shortly be handing you the divorce papers on behalf of its client, Reality. And in the spirit of overall concern for your well-being, I would counsel you that your medications no longer seem all that effective.